Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker, and it's a pleasure to follow um, the member for um, Stoke-on-Trent South. And I do appreciate some of the points he's making, particularly on uh, social housing and how Stoke is going about the same challenge that faces so many of us. Can I just thank the uh, member for uh, Oxford West and Abingdon, who, who's not uh, currently in, in her place, but uh, for, for securing such an important debate. And I'm obviously delighted to support that, having put in uh, myself for uh, a debate uh, in this. Um, Clearly, local government faces huge challenges, and, um, and, and, and as it has been said uh, by my honourable friend, the member for, for Sheffield, uh, that the cuts faced have been far greater than any other department. And it is our local authorities that have borne the real brunt of austerity, and of course our communities too, with the, the cuts to so many services that have been provided uh, for them. Whether it be the hostels provided for those coming out of prison, coming out of the army, whatever it may be, uh, those who are victims of domestic abuse, whatever, that we have seen the significant cuts in, in certainly in Warwickshire. Children's services or the, the closure of children's centres, uh, the cuts to waste and recycling, to our fire and rescue service, to our libraries, and the list goes on. But I want to concentrate uh, for the rest of this debate just on uh, social housing and its provision. As the chair of the parliamentary campaign for council housing, I have been an advocate, uh, really, pressing for more social housing, uh, social rented housing, since I arrived in Parliament. And we are really facing a housing emergency, it is well understood. 277,000 people homeless, 1.1 million households on the waiting list, young families spending three times more than they used to on housing costs uh, than 50 years ago. And yet just 6,000 social rented homes were built last year. And in Warwick District, uh, the, the authority uh, that more or less overlaps with my constituency, in the last four years, just eight social rented properties were built, despite 2,000 people on the waiting list. So I've been making this case, as I say, since I arrived. And I, I do really see it as the number one priority uh, for all of us in this House. We must fix the housing crisis. Shelter reports that 3.1 million homes need to be built in the next 20 years to meet the demand of those at the sharp end of housing need, particularly the younger trapped renters and the older renters too. Back in the 50s, of course, it was Churchill's challenge that Macmillan rose to as housing minister and built 200,000 council homes. So this will only happen with significant investment in social rented council housing. And it is social housing that is desperately needed. Since 1980, house building in this country has been distorted by various policies that have resulted in an average of just 25,000 social homes being built a year, compared to 125,000 for the post-war period. That's a loss of 100,000 units per year, 4 million in total. The question that I want to put to the Minister, therefore, is simple. How best to use the £8.5 billion allocated to housing and planning? Because this is a significant sum of money and accounts for 80% of the total M uh, HCLG budget. This year, the Ministry of Housing, Community and Local Government estimates it will spend £3.9 billion on affordable homes, a sum that includes affordable rent, although this is often a misnomer, as well as home ownership options such as part buy and also social rented housing. Back in 1953, just to put it into context, in one year alone, the then Conservative government invested £11.35 billion at today's prices. So this is clearly not enough. And from my conversations across the House, there is widespread support for increasing the budget. Where we differ is the proportion that should be spent on social housing. And there is real clear blue water between us and how that should be funded. This call for a massive increase in social rented housing is echoed by Shelter and in their report produced by the Social Housing Commission they concluded a need for 3.1 million homes, as I said, over a 20-year period, equating to 155,000 homes a year, of which I believe 100,000 should at least be council houses. And that is what I put to the House back on the 13th of June and which was supported. So this number is not pie in the sky. It was supported by the Honourable Member for Doncaster and indeed Baroness Varsi. And the only way that councils will hit these kinds of numbers is through grant funding direct to councils, ring fence for building social rented housing. According to its estimates, the local economics, uh, London economics uh, rather, 
uh, stated that 10.7 billion per year is needed, so less than the figure that was being spent in 1953 in real terms. It would be easy to, to think that the lifting of the local authority borrowing cap will be sufficient to provide the funding needed, but it will not. Don't get me wrong. The lifting of the cap is very welcome, though long overdue, but this is estimated to result in only £3.4 billion of investment in building council homes over the next four years. What is fundamentally wrong with the provision of housing currently is that too much money is being spent on the wrong schemes. Within the remit of HCLG, there is the Help to Buy scheme, which in my view is totally the wrong priority and simply being used to maintain inflated house prices and the bloated profits of the house builders and developers. This year, the Help to Buy scheme will once more account for the largest share of housing spend at £4.1 billion. And of course, as reported by the National Audit Office, two-thirds of this, £2.7 billion, is in effect being used to subsidise home buyers yep. who could have bought a home without it, and that one in 25 uh, had household incomes of over £100,000. Surely better would be to use this money to use this money, the £4.1 billion, on building 40,000 social rented homes instead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And beyond M MHCLG, there is of course the massive £21 billion being used on housing benefit annually. Again, surely this budget would be better utilised in building social rent housing and realise the assets opposed to fuelling the private rental sector at taxpayers' expense. And I will indeed give one. Yes, that's way. Uh, and I've got quite a lot of sympathy with the point he's making about the Help to Buy scheme, particularly the report from the NAO. Uh, would he now not agree <coughs> that whatever the difference of view there might be, one thing the government should do is to at least do an evaluation of the Help to Buy scheme before they embark on a further phase of it? Okay. Yeah. I I, I, I thank my uh, honourable friend for, for his intervention, and of course he always makes an important point. His, 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 his knowledge in this sector is, is unsurpassed, and he's absolutely right. We should be suspending that. We should actually be thinking about how uh, that budget should be used urgently to kick-start, as I will come on to say, to kick-start a social rented uh, programme. So I say all this because of the pressing and urgent crisis we face in terms of homelessness and rough sleeping. And we heard about the example from my honourable friend, the member for York, just what sort of crisis, what this looks like across our communities as our housing markets are distorted by developers. But you know, Lord Porter put it very well. He said a good home provides a good chance of good health, good education and good lives. The reality is, of course, that without it, we are seeing a huge increase in social and health-related issues, all of which add to the already great burdens faced by our local services and thus our local authorities. So in summary, Mr Deputy Speaker, local government faces huge challenges indeed. The rising costs and numbers related to children's services, the crisis that is the unsustainable pressure brought by adult social care, the closure of hostels, the cuts to welfare services, as well as the closure of children's centres, libraries and fire stations. But I would assert that the desperate need of social rented housing is at the core of so many of the problems we face. Yeah, yeah. To that end, I would urge the Minister to reconsider the allocation of budgets, to slash the support for help to buy, to suspend it, to lay claim to the housing benefit budget and use them to kick-start the industrial-scale social housing our society desperately needs. Yeah, yeah, yeah.